we are going to make this beautiful 3D tea towel. Stick around and I'll show you how. Okay, so I am going to attempt to make this gingerbread 3D hanging dish towel just for decor, okay? Now, this is the pattern. I've already cut one out, but what you want to do, say this is the 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 um good lord, the fabric. You want to take it and you want to put right sides together and then put your pattern down, pin it, cut it out, yada yada, okay? So here we are. We're down, cut, and ticking like a time bomb. You know, y'all have to overlook my voice through this video because my allergies were bad last week and I had to make kind of an unexpected um, trip to Florida and it has between you know the, the weather there and the weather here it, it really took a toll on me so yeah I'm kind of growly and raspy and I am sorry so what we're gonna do is and it doesn't matter at this point I'm, I'm gonna use a white thread to sew this you can use brown but I'm using white because I um, am not gonna be putting rickrack on here I don't want to sew it what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my zigzag on my machine to make uh, like a makeshift um, rickrack type deal. Okay, so we're just going to go over here and stitch around and leave a spot open. Now, my needle will be all the way to the right. And I'm going to use the edge of my presser foot like I always do. Okay, I've stitched and I decided to leave the part of the head open. And now you want to clip any, any points for sure and around every curve. And this will help this lay a whole lot flatter when you flip it inside out and iron it. Um, make sure you get the crotch or whatever. I don't know what you call it. I call it a crotch. I don't know. I try to be decent. Okay, make sure you clip all around. See, we're all clipped. Hopefully, we'll lay, we'll lay flat. Now, you just want to grab this, and I stick my thumb in when it's a big thing like this, and I'm going to grab one of the feet, and I'm just going to pinch it, and then I'm going to start pulling over my finger. Um, this seems to work better for me when I'm doing stuff like this. I don't know. You may have your own way. And if you do, you know, that's good. Whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you happy and you can get her done. Um, make sure you, I don't want to use that in, poke everything out uh, and curve it around. Now when you're ironing, um, you see, if I just iron this like this, it is going to be flat right here. So you're going to have to maneuver, you know, to make it look round, um, but not stick out. This is the only reason why I don't like doing this on a curved spot. But, you know, it, it won't be bad if you pull and just work with it. Just work with it and it'll be fine. Now you're going to want to take your tea towel. And I think that I got this at Walmart, but I'm not sure. I usually get them in a pack. They do sell them at the Dollar Tree as well, um, but you want to make sure it's iron flat. I always pre-wash mine for shrinkage. That's just me. And I want to fold it in. Okay. And this is important that you do this this way because we're going to iron this. Fold it in and then fold it in on itself again. Okay. Now. This can go over some. I try to get it as even as I can. Uh, you know, these towels are not not even. Um, they're just real thin, junky junk. So, anyway, now I want to, I'm going to do this, this side. Wait, no, this side. I'm going to do this side. So, I'm going to iron my towel just like this. Okay, iron all these edges. There's that all ironed. 
Okay, now, I have my tea towel, and I want to put this on my tea towel. So now, because I've ironed it, I know that this spot right here is where my little ginger needs to go, okay? And you don't want it up your towel. You want it kind of down at the bottom. So I'm going to place my gingerbread here, and I am going to put a few pins in here. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to zigzag this down, okay? Okay, now I have got my machine on zigzag and make sure you don't have your towel underneath there. And I'm just going to start zigzagging very carefully around this. And if I mess up, you're just going to see it because I'm just going to go with it, okay? I'll show you my mistakes. But make sure also when you do this that you pretty much have your your gingerbread centered or it will be off okay now i'm also going to start kind of in the straight step straight part so i can end up in the straight part okay here we go I am simply going to take a Sharpie and put my face on. Um, I, I might go over it with puff paint. I'm not sure if I do, I'll, I'll let you know. But I'm just going to make little lines, kind of curved. And then I'm going to make, you know, that little eye part. There we go. And then I'm going to make her eyebrows. And then I'm just going to make her smile like this right here. That makes me happy. Okay, so let me try. I'm afraid to try with the puff paint because if I mess it up, then I'm done. So I'm just going to take my marker. And usually this won't run out or wash out um, normally. If it does, draw it back on. Make sure you get your eyes even as possible. And then I'm just gonna give it a pink nose and some pink cheeks. And that is that. Okay, now we're gonna put a little skirt on her. And I'm, I'm just, these are scrap fabrics, okay? These are scrap fabrics. And I just wanna take this, and that's already ripped. 
Now I know a hundred people is going to get on to me. Surge your edges or finish your edges. You know, it's your edges. Do what you want with your edges, okay? I'm going to do what I want with my edges. And we'll all be happy, okay? I promise. So I will fold this under before I gather and iron it real quick. So the other piece wasn't quite long enough. So I'm going to take another piece and I've already ripped this bottom here and I want it barely peeking above her feet. Okay. Um, now if you want it where her feet are showing, you go ahead, but I screwed up so I don't want her feet showing. It'll come out a little bit anyway. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, it needs to come to right here. Okay. Right in the nap of her neck. So I'm going to clip a little bit above that because I have to fold it under and I'm just going to rip. Okay. I am. However, I want my bottom ragged. Okay. But I am going to fold my sides in and stitch those. Okay. So now we have this part. We need an apron and we're going to do these all. We're going to do these together. Okay. So this is just a scrap that I have for the apron. So on this as well, um, I just want her apron ragged. So I've sewn my sides here on both sides, but not on my apron because I want it shabby. Now you're going to put it in the middle. Okay. Now you're going to fold both of these down. Fold them down the same way. And then I'm going to go iron this to make sure that they stay. Okay, now you want to take, and I'm going to start on the inside. So I'm going to flip this around. And make sure, what I use dental floss, but whatever you use, thick thread, put a big knot in there, okay? Because you don't want this to come through. Then what we're going to do is we're going to just go along the edge and draw this up okay and we want it the size of the neck of your gingerbread so all I'm gonna do is go in and out making sure that I catch the dress and the apron okay this is gonna ouch this is gonna be cute and I know it man the things I do in this room I tell you <clears throat> sorry let me do this now, before I drew this up here, I, I measured it. The skirt itself is 18 wide by 6 inches high. And then the apron is 13. And you can do it any size just as long as you have some of your dress showing. You know, that's up to you. Tie it off and knot it real, real good so it doesn't come apart, okay? You don't want anything to come apart. Now I made mine a little longer. I took it apart and I'm going to tuck this in a little bit so that it, you know, it's not sticking straight out like that. I'm going to tuck that in and I'm going to tuck the other side in before I tack it down so that it comes, you know, it looks like it's going around the doll and not just sticking on the gingerbread. Now I'm going to go sew this right across here okay i actually have a size 18 needle in there and i use it a lot of times with jeans more than i do a 16 so oh my goodness i'm so sorry i'm so raspy i really am okay i'm going to make sure this side's tucked in and i'm just going to go across it it really doesn't matter where my my sewing line is because you're not going to see it okay so i'm going to run my my edge on here but I'm gonna put my needle in the middle all right my needles in the middle and I'm gonna lengthen my stitch quite a bit just to jump over this thing so let me move my pen first off this might be loud, but I'll cut it out. And 
now this is a strip that I ripped off earlier just a scrap strip and I am just going to take this and I am going to go around like this pull this in to make a bow for her head and then I'm gonna cut this and rip it off so I'm just gonna take my thread that I had and put it through the middle and I'm gonna run it around and around and then I'm just gonna pull it okay this is just a simple bow and then I'm gonna tie it in the back right here I'm not gonna cut my thread sorry I had it in my face so I could see but I'm not gonna <coughs> sorry I'm not going to um, take my thread out I'm just gonna run my thread down under here and come back up okay and this will also help tie it in make sure you don't catch your you know don't catch your what is this thing dish towel I'm so sorry you'll have y'all have to forgive me you have no idea well if you have allergies you have an idea so now that it's tacked, I'm just going to go back here and then I'll simply tie this off. Now you just want to fluff her little hair bow out here. I mean, it's fabric. You can't do much fluffing. It's fabric. But I don't want that in her eyes. So I'm going to pull it out because I can do that. There. I like that. Now, I threaded my baker's twine on a fat-eyed needle, okay? Now, I'm going to attempt to go through the back of this and hit this middle right here, okay? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> In order to tie it up, you need to go down through here. I'll be all right, y'all. Go down through it first. Now, come up. And it's going to be hard to get this twine through there. You're going to have to keep just rolling your needle around and it will come out. Now make sure you don't hit your twine. Good Lord. Now go up through here from the back side. And just wiggle till you wiggle and pull. You can use pliers if you want to. But it's not that hard to come through there. And I don't need that much. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot so it doesn't come out, okay? Now all I'm going to do is just tie a little bow tie in here. Just a shoestring bow tie. No biggie. We're just tying a bow. Pull your tails down. Make it the size that you want it. These things curl. And cut your tails. Now I'm going to take my I'm going to take my apron and get it off of my dress and separate that a little bit and there you go isn't that darling I love it let me show you what it looks like folded now so when you get done you know just fold your towel right back up the way you had it. And there you have your little 3D tea towel. Thanks for watching.